strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh they stumbled and fell though a host shall encamp against me my heart shall not fear though war shall rise against me in this will I be confident one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of of the Lord and inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me upon a rock and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies around about me therefore I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy I will sing yea I will sing praises unto the Lord now, as we prepare to go to the throne of grace, if you all could please stand as we sing, we come this far by faith to our first family as they process in.
prepare to go to the throne of grace, we ask that Sister Reva Cartier will come forth and give us our prayer of consecration. Praise you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for this new day. We thank you, Father God, for bringing us here safely. We thank you, Father God, for watching over us there, Father God. As we bring this service before you, Father God, we ask you to touch every single person in this building in the name of Jesus. Those that's on his way, protect them there, Father God. And as we're hearing this service, open up our hearts, our minds, our soul, and dedicate our soul to you completely there, Father God. Anything that we have done wrong, anything that we need forgiveness for there, Father God, we ask you that you will forgive us right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father God, for this is a new day and a new month. And as we go forward there, Father God, we ask you that you bless our first family there, Father God. Continue to provide and make ways for them there, Father God. Continue to heal and touch their home and family there, Father God. In the name of Jesus, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet there, Father God. And we ask there, Father God, that you will continue to be the God that you are. For there is none like unto you there, Father God. And Satan, we place you under our feet. For there is none like our Father God there, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for you are God and God alone. And no one can compare to you there, Father God. And we thank you, God. We will give you praise for it is already done. And we praise you there, God, right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. We praise you, God. Home and shut in those that are sick, those that are not doing well. Right now we claim healing in the name of Jesus. We put every situation in your hands. We place it in your hands and we believe and trust that you will do it there, Father God. Satan, you are not allowed here. You are under our feet there, Father God. And we thank you for your healing. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Father God, for all that you are doing in the name of Jesus. We thank you in advance for it is done, Father God, in our homes, in our families, at our workplace there, Father God, on the street as we go forward in this week there, Father God. We place everything in your hands there, God, for it is well, it is well, and there is none like unto you there, God. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now we would ask for the deacon to come forth and render us devotion. You may be seated. Oh, Lord, we just thank you this morning. We're going to do a little devotional song for you. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. I feel better. Better since I lay my 
saints. Um, I will be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 8. When you have it, say amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 8. It reads, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I have made a fool of myself, but you drove me to it. I ought to have been commended by you, for I am not in the least inferior to super apostles, even though I am nothing. I preserved and demonstrating among you the marks of a true apostle, including signs, wonders, and miracles. How were you inferior to other churches, except that I was never a burden to you? Forgive me this wrong. Now I'm ready to visit you for the third time, and I will not be a burden to you because... What I want is not your possessions, but you. After all, children should not have to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. Amen. Heavenly Heavenly Father, I come to your throne of grace and mercy because you say I could come. Lord, knowing that you say it in your word, that the shepherd can enter into the sheepfold. He knows his sheep by name. And Lord, you know that uh, he have other sheep of another fold. But knowing that robbers must clam over the sheep fold. Oh, and the hired hand will flee. But Father, we have a shepherd in this house. Father, knowing that he lays down his life each day just for us. And not only that, it's the outside sheep that he gives his life to also. And thank you, Lord. And Father, I thank you for him. And Father, knowing that he gives everything, he sacrifices home, family, and everything else that just protects us. We cannot give that man anything more than uh, your love. And Father, knowing that his love is we, that we shall be over to give him and father knowing we color him father and we color him love and heavenly father we thank you that you bless his family that will be able to protect him and know the greater love than a man to lay down his life for a friend and I thank you Lord thank you for Pastor Stanley Murray and his family this day and father we ask you to bless everyone in this house and father touch him today Father, knowing that we woke up with blood still running warm in our blood and in our veins. And thank you, Lord. Thank you. We came here to the house of the Lord to praise your holy name. And Father, may we continue to praise your name. Father, knowing that we don't know what to pray for most of the time, but knowing that the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. And I thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for your son, Lord Jesus. And Father, bless every member here and bless those that are less fortunate. In your holy son, Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. It's too quiet in here. Sound like it's about five people. Can I have somebody open up their mouth and give God some praise in this place? He's been too good. He has been too good. And not only that, there are some people that came into this place with burdened hearts. There's a spirit of depression that's running rampant in our world right now in the name of Jesus. And I stopped by to share with you, if you're here today, God is using you. Go ahead, Brother Milton. You ought to praise him while you got a chance in the name of Jesus. Somebody came in here not knowing why they even came. Somebody came with depression in their mind, fear in their heart. Lord God, I'm asking that you would move in this place. 
There's a heaviness resting in this place. Somebody is needing a healing for their family member. Somebody is going through something right now in the name of Jesus. And which calling them out. Hallelujah. I want you to go right now to hug somebody that's in this place. Because you don't know what it took for them to get here. Move, 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 move. In the name of Jesus. Don't look at me. You need to be praising and helping somebody. Speak life into your brother and your sister right now in the name of Jesus. If you want the Holy Spirit to begin to show up in this place, you got to move. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name. And it's more than two or three people in this place. So the Holy Spirit should be coming down from heaven. Begin to stir up the gift that's laying dormant right now in the name of Jesus. A simple hug can do so much for a person. If you never felt alone, you may not know what it feels like. But the love of Jesus embraces us all in the name of Jesus. I pray for comfort in this place. I pray for peace in this place in the name of Jesus. Too many times we come to church and leave the same way. It's time for somebody to get free in this place. Too many times we come to church and follow the program. Well, this is a public announcement for you all. The program has been interrupted in the name of Jesus. God has given me the power to speak in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is coming. He's coming. He's coming. Welcome him in. Praise him, praise him, praise him. The Bible says when the blessings go up. I mean, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. But the blessings is already here. I need somebody to cry out hallelujah, which is the highest praise. Yes, because when we get to heaven, all my brothers and sisters, we're going to do nothing but praise and worship God. So if you're trying to go to heaven, you better get ready right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, demons must flee. So if it's a demon in here, you got to go. Oh, 
Spirit begins to speak right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you begin to break up some yokes, Lord God, cast down some negative spirits right now in the name of Jesus. We need mind regulation right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Right now in the name of Jesus, allow your Holy Spirit to have his way in this place, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Where we were not worthy, Lord God, you called us into the fold right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Shake us loose, Lord God. What should we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It could have been me. It should have been me, but I'm here right now in the name of Jesus. Don't wait till you're sick and begin to praise them. You need to praise them while you're in your right mind, while your heart is still together, while the blood is still running warm in your veins. You want to praise the Lord for he is good. He is worthy. We are free. no program. God has already done enough. I ain't got time to play church today. I ain't got time to play church today. is already open. You don't have to wait to the end of the service to join in the army of the Christians that are assembled here right now. God is calling some warriors to come forth in the name of Jesus. He said at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess. I don't want to have to worry about whether I'm going to heaven or hell. I want to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Have your way in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He's beginning to break some things up right now in the name of Jesus. Too many times we so worried about the time. But God says in his word that it's but a vapor. God has no worry about time. It's in his timing that things will begin to take place. There's some blessings on the way. There's some healing on the way. And if you're worried about time, you might miss it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. Some people have lost some loved ones in the name of Jesus. And they're still hurting right now in the name of Jesus. But I'm so filled, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus. That I know that you're going to bring it to pass. That you're going to allow comfort to come over this place right now in the name of Jesus. That you're going to allow healing to come in this place. You're going to have strength in this place. It's already here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, don't hold back. This is your time. This is your time. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. the dark places that Jesus reveals his treasures in the name of Jesus I was young but now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread in the name of Jesus I need everybody praying in this place. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Some things are about to happen in this place. In the name of Jesus. The oil is about to run in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, I'm asking right now that you put a dance in our feet. In the name of Jesus. You put love in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Lord God, that you begin to move in the name of Jesus. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. If you battle in your mind right now in the name of Jesus, you need to call it out. Because we know that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But you came, Heavenly Father, that we may have the right to the tree of life. And we give you honor on today. The Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, my, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my cup with my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. 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 We're praying for restoration in the name of Jesus. Now that we've laid it all at the altar, let it go. We're giving it all back to him right now in the name of Jesus. Leave all your sorrows, all your depression, all your anger at the altar in the name of Jesus. That when you return to your seat, God is going to do a new thing. No longer will you just sit in your seat, but God will put a dance in your feet, a wave in your hand, a shout in your voice. Hallelujah! Because he is worthy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. In the name of Jesus. Name of 
when I seek to do good. Evil is always present. Well, God, I'm giving it to you right now. That evil thing that keeps creeping up behind me, I cast it down in the name of Jesus. Allow me to walk upright, righteous. If I stand with too much fear in my heart, Lord God, I ask that you will humble me. Move me from me that I may glorify thee. Prove me now which saith the Lord of hosts. If I not, will not pour you out, open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will have room enough to receive it. I give you glory on today. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for what he is doing in this place. I trust and believe that this worship service going forward will not be the same. If you see somebody sitting there hurting, Lord God, I pray that you would send a saint by their way, Lord God, to give them comfort, Lord Jesus. Allow this to be a place of family, of worship. To show it, Lord God, not to just say it. And as the praise team comes, I challenge them right now in the name of Jesus to let the Lord use them. Not for show, not for fashion, Lord God, but that the Holy Spirit will begin to reign and continue to move in the people in this place. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you. We love you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Keep those praises going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for loving us. To our first family, from my husband and I, we love y'all. And we just thank y'all for who you are. Thank you. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, oh. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Say. Yes, Lord. Lord, you reign. You reign on the throne. For you are God. For you are God. And you are God alone. Because of you. And I can sing to you. All right, Lord. Rather
love me in your arms you are my shelter from the storm when all my dreams are gone you were right there all alone i've never known a love like this before oh and I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Come on, y'all can sing with us. Oh, say I love you. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore Just want to tell you, Lord. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Yeah, yeah, say I love you. I love you, Jesus. Lord, I worship and I adore your name. I worship and adore Just want to tell you, Lord. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love Lord, you. I love you. Lord, I love you. Oh, Come on, one more time, one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. say I love you. Lord, we worship and we adore your name. Just want to tell you, Lord. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Yeah. Say, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Say, I love you, Jesus. Say, I love you, Jesus. Say, I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I can't make it without you. Can't make it without you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I can't make it without you. I can't make it without you. Say, I love you, Jesus. Say, I love you, Jesus. Say, I need you. Say, I need you, Jesus. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. We can't make it without you. We can't make it without you. We love you, Jesus. Like you, Lord. Say, I love you, Jesus. 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 More than anything. More than anything. More than anything, more than anything, more than anything, more than anything. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Woo. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more. Love you. How many believe that the Lord loves them? How many of you believe that the Lord loves you? As the choir was singing, I was thinking about something. And 
I was like, Lord, I don't know if I should share this, but you've already moved anyway. So vulnerability is what God wants from us. So one night I was sleeping and my husband snores. But this particular night, he wasn't snoring. And the thought began to run through my mind. Had the rapture came and I missed it. The rapture's coming. And if we're not ready, you'll be waking up out your sleep like, what happened, Lord? Did I miss it? And I began to pray because I was like, Lord, have I done enough? Have I confessed enough? People will look at you and think you got it all together. But I'm standing here as an empty vessel asking the Lord to fill me up right now. Because I want to be ready whenever he calls my name. I want to be called up to see him in the air. So we got to think about this, saints. Have you done enough? Have you prayed enough? Have you helped enough? But more than all of that, have you confessed with your mouth? Believed in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead because that makes you saved. It don't matter how much money because money can't save you. When God is ready to move on your life, he will move. Will you be ready when Jesus comes? I give honor to our first family. Come on. Put your hands. And I pray that I'm not out of line right now. But we need the scripture. So can the scripture reading began to come forth because I believe that the people of God are assembled here today want to hear the word of God Amen. Elder Alls would you come and render us our scripture for today Amen. Please come and go with us to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. If we have found it, please say amen. amen. And it reads, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For well, I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going out to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thy heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from heaven, 
or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is not thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all who call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people. Is your house rapture ready? We've heard the scripture. Now it's our time to give back to God who has given us so much. As we prepare our hearts and our minds for the offering, I would think that you would dig a little bit deeper. Don't think about where you are right now, but think about where you want God to take you. And begin to sow your seed on good ground that the Holy Spirit can move on your behalf because you're making a sacrifice unto him. We know that God has already sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. So there's no amount of money that we can give him for what he's already done. And as the ushers would come, if you need an envelope, raise your hand. Because this is the first family appreciation, if you, not, if you have not held on to your obligation, this is the time. Would a man rob God? The Bible asked that question. He, they said, wherein have we robbed thee? The Bible said in tithes and an offering. So as you begin to prepare and get your offerings ready, The basket so on my glad. left I'm so glad. is for the oh, first yes, family. The trouble don't last the trouble don't last These baskets way. here are for the tithe and the offering. He may not come where Would you, you want him. Please stand. But he's on time. Yes, he is. On time. I found him to be a friend of mine. When storm clouds rising in your life, he will be there, yes he will. Every one of your burdens, I know that the Lord will help you to bear. Oh yes I am, trouble don't last always. I'm so glad. Oh, yes, I am. The trouble don't last away. He may not come when you want him, but he's on time. Yes, he is. In times of trouble, I found him to be a friend of mine. When storm clouds rising in your life, he will be there, yes he will. Every one of your burdens, I know 
that the Lord will help you to bear. Oh, yes, I am. Trouble don't last always. I'm so glad. Oh, yes, I am. Trouble don't last always. Trouble don't last always. No, 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 no. Trouble don't last always. No, 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 no. Trouble don't last always. No, no. Trouble don't last always. No, 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 no. Trouble don't last always. Trouble don't last always. No, 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 no. Trouble don't last always. No, 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 no. Trouble don't last always. We've been made and do it for a night. Keep the faith, it'll be alright. We've been made and do it for a night. Keep the faith, it'll be alright. Stand for prayer. Gracious Father God, we thank you so much for this day, God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for these funds that's been given for the upkeeping, building of your kingdom. We thank you, Father God, for the hearts that gave. And God, we ask God that you bless the hearts that wanted to give but had not the means. Father God, this is all for you. And God, we just want to tell you that we thank you. And show you, God, that we love you each and every second that you give us. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray and say amen. 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 For us to go just a little bit higher, we're going to have one more selection by the praise team. By the unction of the Holy Spirit, now we will have the word. Come on, give God some praise. He has showed up in this place. Give him some praise. The program was definitely interrupted. You ought to give God some praise. That means if he can do it here, he can do it at home. So whatever you've been praying about, allow the program to be interrupted. The man of God that's going to come and break the bread of life is no stranger to this house. He has served as the assistant associate pastor of Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church. He loves the people of God. He loves the man and woman of God. And he loves his wife. I present to you, my brother, my Associate Assistant Pastor, Pastor Reggie Palmer.
Come on and give God a praise. I don't know about you, but God is definitely in this place. And if you came looking for him, you're in the right place. My God, it's, it's, when God come in and take over, there's nothing you can do. You can try to go by this thing right here, call a program. But when God come in and just shipwreck the place, you can't do nothing but give God the praise, give God the glory, and give God the honor. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for this family. I, I tell you, if, if, you, if God has ever given you a person that you can call your brother, this is it. It seems like we just have so much in common. Look how you dress. I ain't, I ain't there yet. But some of the same songs he listened to, I listened to him. It's almost like our playlist is identical. When my wife and I came here, we asked him, Lord, send us to a place. We tried many churches. We visited many churches. I went to a church five minutes from my house because it was convenient for me. One Easter morning, God said, no, you will no longer serve me out of convenience. And, 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 and God led me to this place. I came and I watched, I observed. I came, I watched, I observed. One Wednesday, I was sitting at my desk and I get a phone call from Pastor Murray and say, hey, brother, this is Pastor Murray. I'm just checking on you. I think he was one of the only, only pastors that called and checked on me versus the many churches that I visited. When we came, we didn't join right off the back. We came, we watched, we sat. But when that time came, I, I, I wanted to be true and I wanted to be honest. And I said, sir, I said, I'm not sure how long we will be here. I said, because our plan is to go back to the Midwest. And he said, sir, I'll tell you what. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We haven't gotten to that bridge yet. My church mother back in Missouri, she was praying. And every time I talked to her, she said, son, I'm praying. I said, mother, well, Elder Murray is praying. Pastor Murray is praying too. She said, well, son, I'm praying. And she said, son, it looked like y'all not coming back. I said, mother, pastor's praying. Eventually, she said, you know what? I give up. Pastor Murray won. But she didn't say, son, I would not tell you. She said, I would tell you that you're in the right place. And I'm grateful for this family because what he preached about, he lived. I've never seen a person love their wife harder than me. My God. But that's a blessing within itself. So church, we have to understand what we have. We have to understand who we have. And once we understand what we have and who we have, we will appreciate what we have. Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise. Now help me out. Sit down. You're making me nervous. My God, where's Je Jesus Christ? I said, um... Evangelist, how you doing? And she just turned and looked up. And I paused for a few minutes. I said, um, you have it today. She was like, God. But God couldn't have used a better person to orchestrate his service in such a way 
Because he knew what the people need. And he had it. I sat there and I said, you know what, Lord? She didn't already preach. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm grateful for her spirit. Such a humble person. And I didn't believe him when they say dynamite come in small packages. <laughs> My God. So we're not going to be before you long, but we're going to thank God. Eternal God in heaven, Lord, we just say thank you this morning. God, we thank you for what you've already done, Lord. Lord, if you don't do anything else, God, you've done enough. Oh, God, now we ask you, oh, God, this morning to allow Reggie to sit down, oh, God, and you stand up. God, let everything that I say, oh, Lord, be done according to your will. Not my own will, but by thy will, oh, God. Father, use me in a way in which the people know that it's you, oh, God. It have nothing to do with me. God, we're grateful for these people that assemble today, oh, God. Because, God, we know that you have your people here on assignment this morning. Someone came, oh God, because someone invited them, oh God. Somebody came, Lord, because they just felt like I need to get into the house of God. Someone came out of routine, oh God, but they didn't come expecting what they got, oh God. But God, we just thank you this morning, oh God. Lord, we give your name the praise, the honor, and all the glory shall forever be yours. In Jesus' name, we pray. Somebody say amen. We do give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We do give honor to Pastor Murray and First Lady Murray. Amen. To the family. Church, I'm going to help y'all, okay, as we go along, okay? When I say we give, we give honor to Pastor Murray and the First Family, I just need y'all to lose y'all mind. Okay, church, I won't teach you no more this week, all right, this month. I expect us to know this because God has given them to us. So we're going to just visit for a few minutes, and then I'm going to get out of your way. Pastor Murray texts me, the theme, a family awaking to give in charge to God's people and to adhere to his calling. In our scripture reading this morning will be found in Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, and we're going to start about the third verse. Jeremiah. The fourth chapter. And we're going to start about the third verse. If you don't mind, if you can, and able, if you don't mind to stand for me, please, for the reading of God's word. When you find it, can you say amen? If you lead them a little bit more time, say, wait a minute. Jeremiah fourth chapter, starting at the third verse. And it reads, For thus said the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and do not sow among thorns. Circumcise yourself to the Lord, and take away the foreskin of your heart. You men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest the many furries come forth like a fire and burn so that no one can quench it because of the evils of your heart. Declare in Judah and proclaim in, Jer in Jerusalem and said, Blow the trumpet in the land. Cry, gather together, and say, assemble yourselves, and let us go into the fortify the city. 
Set up the standard toward Zion. Take refuge. Do not delay, for I will bring disaster for the north and greater destruction. The lion has come up from his thicket to destroy the nations on his way. He has gone forth from his place to make your land desolate, for the cities will lay waste without the inhabitants. For this cloth, for this cloth is yourself with sackcloth, laminate and well. For the fire's anger, for the fierce anger of the Lord has not turned back from us. And it shall come to pass that the day said the Lord, that the heart of the king shall perish, and the heart of the princes and the priests shall be astonished, and the prophets shall wonder. Can we say amen? amen. Can we say amen? amen? Forty years God's prophets urged the people of Judah to turn back to God. If they didn't change, God was going to destroy the nation. Instead of changing... The people got mad. You know how we do sometimes today. If Pastor Murray said, the Lord told me to tell you, we sometimes find a way to get mad. We sometimes say, but we don't say it to him, but we say it to other people who we think he is. I'm just trying to help you this morning. He just don't mind his business. Who do he think he's talking to? Somebody say it's time to make a change. It's time. To make a change. God put people in our lives and over us for a reason. And God sent word through the man of God to warn us about people, places, and things. And sometimes we don't take the warning as a warning. We take it as discipline. And we can't not stand up to the word because of our pride. Don't you know God resists the proud? But sometimes we come here with such a proud heart and, and mind and head that we cannot hear the word of God. Sometimes we come to church and leave the same way we came because we don't want to yield to the Holy Spirit. We don't want to yield to what said the Lord. But there's no sense for you to come here and spend two hours here and leave the same way you came. If the word is for you, the word is for you. So we got to understand that, 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 that he's on an assignment. God given him an assignment and an assignment is to preach and teach the word of God to his people. Somebody say amen. amen. We have to get to a place where it's not about us. But it is about us. Sometimes we want it, but we don't want to go through what it takes to get it. You know how we do today, Pastor. You just mind your business, please. But God put him here for a reason, and there's a purpose. Because God speaks to him when he don't speak to us. He stay up all night toiling for us. Tarry it for us. And God speak to him in time in which we sleep. Let me give you an example. My wife was going through something a couple of weeks back. And I didn't have a conversation with Pastor Murray at all. That morning he called, he said, sis, I just want to tell you, it's going to be all right. 
My wife said, my God, did you talk to the pastor? I said, I didn't say a word to him. But when you connect with God, people and God's people connect with you, you don't have to tell the man of God of what's going on. God would expose it for you. We got to get connected to the source. And so many times we fight against the very thing that keep us. It's time to make a change. God sent the warning, but the people didn't heed to the warning. Instead of heeding to the warning, they got mad. Whew, this seemed familiar. Do you know warning comes before destruction? If you just would sit still and hear the word of God, a lot of things we go through, we wouldn't even have to go through them if we just sit still. So many times we run and ain't nobody chasing us. We just running. But let me help you. Don't you know you can be on a treadmill running? but not going anywhere? Somebody say, yes, Lord. And because the people didn't listen, didn't hear the warning, finally what Jeremiah predicted happened. Judah and Jerusalem was destroyed by Babylon. And the people was taken captive. If pastor knows what's best for me, I'm not going to fight against it. Because I already been to hell. I already lived in hell. When I lived in Chicago, let me help somebody. When I lived in Chicago, in the projects, that was hell. I didn't understand what it felt like to be able to leave your windows open. I didn't understand what it feels like to go to bed and not lock your door. I didn't understand those things. I didn't understand what it means to just to let your kids go out and play. I didn't understand those things. We had to duck bullets almost every single night. So why would I want to go back? It's time to make a change. Verse 3 tells us, For thus said the Lord, the, man of Ju the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up, follow ground, and do not sow among thorns. My first point, you have to clean up your heart. You have to clean up your heart. We can say much things out of this mouth right here, but the heart is far from it. It's time to make a change. How can you say you love somebody, but when they call on you, 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 you just... You just, instead of pushing the green, you push the red. When somebody calls you, instead of pushing the green, you turn your phone off. But you say, I love you. It's, 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 but, but don't let you get in some trouble and then you're trying to call. If somebody don't answer the phone, then you get on Facebook. Then you go to Facebook and talk about people because they didn't answer but what about when they called you it's time to make a change in other words we got to turn from our sinful ways we have to prepare our hearts it's like a farmer a farmer can't plant unless they till the ground first I'm not a, I'm not a farmer but I lived in the country and, and, and before they, they get the, to, to, to put the seeds and things down, they have to first till the ground. Somebody need to till their hearts today. Somebody need to till their hearts today. You have to get rid of everything that prevents you from serving God. But you just got to get rid of one thing. And what is that? Everything. You know how we do. We give up some things and save some things. We throw away some things, but we hold on to some things. We give away some people and places and things, but we hold on to some people and places and things. It's time to make a change. 
you got to clean up your heart. They used to have a song, I got to clean up without a messed up. And start all over again. Our problem is we don't want to say I'm sorry. Our problem, we don't want to ask for forgiveness. So how can you clean up what you mess up if you don't want to say I'm sorry? You don't want to even go to God and say, Lord, please forgive me. But you want the blessings from God, but you don't want to confess your sins. It's time to make a change. Verse 4, as we go, and I'm just going to deal with verse 3 and 4, and I'm going to get out your way. Circumcise yourself to the Lord. Take away the foreskins of your heart. My second point. You got to circumcise your heart. You got to take that stuff away. You got to get rid of all that stuff not like God. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired of hearing I forgive, but I don't forget. I, I, I forgive, but... I don't forget, then you ain't forgave nobody. You ain't forgave nobody. You still holding on to it. You may say you were sorry, but you didn't mean it. Because if you meant it, you would have gave it. You would have You got to get to a place in life when you can move on. The Bible says, forget those things which are behind you. So sometimes we can't go forward for looking backwards. You got to give up some things. This requires an eternal spiritual operation that only God can do. Only God can do it. Every time we try to do something, we just make a mess out of it. Every time we try to do it, it just it, it just get worse. It get it, it just get worse. And God, just, you know what God do? He just going to sit down. You see, I pass Murray sitting right there. That's what God do. He just sit down, and he wait until you get out of the way. And then when you get out of the way, he said, well, I thought you would move. So, but I don't want to get to the point where God sit down on me. I don't want to get to the point where God turned a deaf ear to me. I don't want to get to a point where God said, you know what? I, I, I don't hear nothing you're saying because when I was trying to speak to you, you didn't hear anything that I was saying. So, so I, I, I'm just going to sit down on you. Don't you know a conversation goes two ways? A conversation go two ways. We can't speak to God and then get up. Because it's God's turn. And the reason why we get up so fast is because we don't want to hear what he's talking about. We don't want to hear what he's saying. Just like we don't want to hear what the man of God said. We don't really want to hear God what God said. But we always say, can you pray for me? Why ask somebody to preach when you really don't want to pray for you when they really don't want to? You don't want to hear it. Because if they pray for you, they might tell you the right thing and you don't want, that's what you, you don't, you don't want to hear the right thing. You want to have itchy ears. You want them to tell you what you want to hear versus what you need to hear. Somebody says time to make a change. We got to circumcise our heart. The text says, let my fury come forth like fire and burn that no one can quench. Why will we allow ourselves to get in a place of God where, this, where, where, where destruction just come upon us and nobody can do anything about it? We get to the point where we just messed up so much where we, we feel like we're on fire and we call the fire department and they can't even put you out. We, we, we. I, I just, I just want to help you today. We go through so much stuff and, 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 and but we don't want to hear the truth. It's time to make a change. In 2018, we said, only the strong will survive. Sound like a change to me. In 2019, we said, doing more with less. Sound like a change to me. Some left, but some came. It's, it's amazing what God 
can do with little. He will take your little and make it much when you place it in the master hand. So the thing is, we got to look into the hills in which cometh our help, realizing that our help comes from God. Where you're looking at. In 2020, we said, the stepping up. Ha. Stepping out. I need y'all help. Somebody shout taking over. Okay, that was okay if it was for me. Somebody shout taking over. We about to take it over. Because God has placed us in a strategic place where it's time for us to move out of this place. It's time for us to move out where God has something. God has something for Mount Zion. And I'm just crazy enough to believe if we just hold our peace and let the Lord fight our battle, heaven belong to us. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. I just came today because I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. It's time to make a change. God is about to take this little bit. But y'all know what? That's not even a little church, y'all. Let me help some of y'all. This is a mega church in a small building. This is a mega church in a small building. See, y'all problem is y'all look at the glass and say the glass is half empty versus being half full. I'm, I'm just trying to help somebody today. That's to get good to me because I, 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 I'm going to stay on the boat, y'all. Woo! Because I know where the boat is going. And if you were smart, you would stay on the boat. Don't pay for your ticket. Don't pay for your ticket. You was in church last week, you know. We... Okay, Jonah. Don't pay for your ticket. Woo! You got to stay. Let me help you. If what you're doing is not working, change it. If what you're doing is not working, change it. Why stay in the same place when you have the ability to change it? Why stay, stay, woo, why stay with the same person that don't mean you no good when you have the ability to change it? Sometimes you just got to change it. You're running. Ain't nobody chasing you. Somebody shout, change it. Somebody shout, change it. You have the ability to change anything you don't like. Stop saying what you're tired of. Change it. Stop saying what you're sick of. Change it. Stop saying what you don't want and just change it. Sometimes you, you, you just got to walk out of your yesterday into your day. But but the problem is, the problem why we don't want change because change requires something. Change requires something. Change requires something of you. You got to give up some things. You got to let go some things. You got to walk away from some people. But but if you're not willing to walk away, give up and turn around, you're going to stay right where you at. I hope I'm helping you today. The Lord told me to tell you this morning. You cannot step out of your future living in your past. You cannot step into your future living in your past. Well, mama didn't treat me when, when we was younger. This, when mama is still your mama. I'm going to help you. Don't live life to have regrets. Don't live life to have regrets. You got to get over some things. You got to let go some things. A good friend of mine I went to, I went to high school with, him and his brother was, was, was going at each other for years. The brother never said, I'm sorry. A freak accident. The brother fell, hit his head, and died. They never made it right. They never made it right. Now you got to carry that guilt around all the rest of your life because you, didn't, you wasn't mad enough to say, you know what, brother, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Forgive me. Sometimes we got to be the one to take the first step. 
as born again believers, as we say, we got to say, you know what? I got I got to get this off of me. I got to get this off of me. It's time for us to make a change. Somebody say yes, Lord. Somebody say yes, Lord. Sometimes we got to let people, places, and things go. Jesus said, I prepare a table in the presence of your enemy. But I just want to help you this morning. Don't let everybody eat off your plate. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Don't let everybody eat off your plate. Some people eat off your plate don't mean you're no good. Amen. Only thing they saying is the food is good. But they don't mean you're no good. Some people eat off your plate and stab you in your back. Some people would eat off your plate and talk about you behind your back. But I came to help somebody today. I came to help somebody today. See, I heard this, I heard this little, little saying, and it sounded pretty good to me. I'd rather eat crumbs with a bomb than eat steaks with a snake. I'd rather eat crumbs with a bomb than eat steaks with a snake. Oh, Jesus, be careful who eat off your plate. God said it's not business as usual. It's no longer business as usual. Pastor Murray, it's no longer business as usual. But God is preparing to take you. Everybody can't go. As big as your heart is, everybody can't go. Because they're holding up progress. God got something bigger and better for you. Everybody can't go. It's time to make a change. 2019, we had so many attacks. All of us. In some form, fashion, we had so many attacks. It was coming from every single anger. I, I, I tell you, I, I just learned to say, you know what? For Lord, I live and for Lord, I die. I, I can't do anything about it. So why should I sit here and dwell? If I can't pay the bill, I can't pay the bill. So, just, can I help y'all out? See, somebody said it. I think Evangelist said it. She said, y'all look at people, but you don't know what they going through. See, I like to tell y'all my business. So therefore, you can't even talk about me. So let me help you out. Friday morning, I decided to call my wife. And the phone said, well, you are being routed to T-Mobile. <laughs> but you know what? It didn't bother me. Because sometimes the phone needs to be disconnected. Sometimes it don't need to work. Because if it's disconnected, you, don't, you can't call him, her, him, or her. Sometimes the phone needs to be shut off. And sometimes you ain't smart enough to shut it off, so God just turn it off. Somebody say, best time to make a change. You won't turn it off, so God say, you know what, I'll turn it off. You're being routed to T-Mobile. One thing about T-Mobile, they ain't in a hurry for nothing. It took almost three hours for the phone to come back on. But you know what, it, ain't, it didn't bother me one bit. Because if I need to get in touch with anybody, I know Jesus is on the main line. And it never goes busy. And he never sends you to the returner. I know a God. So if you need anything, I right, quit calling him and her. Quit calling. Oh, God, quit calling, quit calling, quit calling. And call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. I guarantee you he won't. He will not take advantage of you. He won't touch you if you don't want to be touched. It's time 
to make a change. It's no longer business as usual. Evangelist gave you a jump start this morning. But some of you sat in looking sanctified and you missed it. Because you didn't want to get ugly for God when you get ugly for everybody else. It's time to make a change. She jump started and she said, I feel something in here. And some of you was weighted down, but you didn't get up. Some of you was going through something, but you didn't get up. Some of you just was on the brink of just going crazy, but you didn't get up because you were sanctified and you didn't want people to look at you. So what? So what they look at you? They don't have a heaven and a hell to put you in. And let the truth be told, they got more going on than you. Sometimes you just got to go for broke. Sometimes you just got to say, you know what? I done tried everything and everybody. Now it's time to try Jesus. Now it's time to try Jesus. I refuse to stay home depressed. I refuse to lock myself in a room. I refuse to call Cleo. I, 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 I refuse to call him. It's time to make a change. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Come on, give God a praise. But, 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 but when you make a change, I just want to tell you about a man, then I got to get out of here. I, I just want to tell you about a man, then I got to get out of here. Woo! I, I just got to tell you about this man. That he took a nobody and made him a somebody. He took a person that was broke and made him rich. He took a, just a little sad little lad that didn't know where he was going and showed him the way. I want to tell you about a man. Woo! I, I want to tell you about my daddy. That bank account never go broke. My daddy. That he got everything that I want. And more. My daddy. His name is Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Somebody shout Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. He walked the road of Galgotha. Somebody say, Woo! 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 See, but they didn't realize because he was walking, he wasn't running. You missed something. They didn't say he ran the road, he walked the road. So sometimes when you walk, you walk with confidence. You walk with confidence. Even though he had a cross on his back, he still walked with confidence. Somebody shout Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. So they thought they were smart, Pastor. So they said, well, I guess we'll nail you. And we'll stretch you wide. But that wasn't good enough. Woo! They decided to lift him up. That's when they made a mistake. Because he said, if I be lifted up. Woo! He said, if I be lifted up. Woo! Not if you be lifted up. Not if you be lifted up. Not, but if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Woo! But that ain't the end of the story. Woo! I'm talking about Jesus. See, 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 see one thing about the enemy. When he think he have you, sometimes he try to laugh at you. But Jesus say, laugh on, son. Because I, it ain't over. Then you had this, you had this, 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 this person on one side. You had one that believed on the other side. And he had a nerve to question Jesus. But Jesus didn't pay him no mind. But the one on the other side had some good sense. He said, remember me, Father, when I come into your kingdom. Woo! I'm talking about my God. Named Jesus. That took a little bitty dude like me. Woo! When they said you won't be nothing. When they said you wouldn't amount to anything. Oh, but then they lie. Woo! One thing about the devil, he's dumb. Woo, because what I was going through is for my making. So I want to help you. What you're going through is for your making. It's necessary what you're going through. Not having a job is necessary. Not having a car is necessary. Not knowing how you're going to pay your bills is necessary. It's necessary because it teaches you to trust in God. But that ain't the end of the story. 
behind there from the sixth to the ninth hour. Woo! So you can, well, you can hang in confidence and say you hit me with your best shot. Woo! But I'm still standing. You can't do nothing for me. But he decided to give up the ghost. He decided. It wasn't because it was too much for him. He knew that the prophecy had to be fulfilled. So he and Gigi, it wasn't nothing that they was doing because he was laughing at him while they was beating him. And ask him, is that the best you got? Sometimes you got to look the enemy in the face and ask him, is that the best you got? It's time to make a change. He hung his head. Oh, God. And he died. Somebody said he died. Somebody shout he died. But that's not the end of the story. Woo! You know when you borrow something, people want it back. I don't like an Indian giver. You give me something and then you want it back. But that's not how I, Jesus, I, Jesus said, look, I just want to borrow this for the weekend. Woo! He laid there, pastor. Not one day, not two days, but three days. Woo, somebody said the third day. Come on, someone talk back to me. Somebody say the third day. He got up with all power. Not some power, but all power. He got up. He got up. He got up. And because he got up, you can get up. It's time to make a change. Come on, come on. Give God some praise. It's time, it's time, it's time. Yes. It's time to make a change. Give Associate Pastor Palmer a hand clap of praise for allowing God to use him. Praise God. Praise God. The doors of the church are now open. The doors of the church are now open. If you heard the word and you're ready to make that change that Pastor Palmer speak, spoke about, the door is open. God is waiting on somebody right now, Lord God. You've been battling in your mind. You've been battling in your heart. But now is your time to make the change, to begin to trust in God, to give him everything that you have. If you've already believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, the door is still open. If you don't have a church home, you're in run right now. Won't you come? You can come by letter. You can come by your own confession. Don't let this moment pass you by because when the rapture comes, if you haven't made the change, it will be too late. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. In the name of Jesus. There's still room. God has already revealed himself in this place. If you're scared, somebody will walk with you in the name of Jesus. Won't you come? So my sister, you believe that the Lord Jesus died for your sins. You believe he's coming back just for you. Are you satisfied with the baptism you received in the past? Are you willing to rededicate and submit yourself to the authority we placed over you? Are you willing to submit your gifts and talents with us? We welcome you back home to Mount Zion. Come ladies, receive her as a woman of Zion.
my heart. Grateful, oh yeah. Gratefulness blowing from my heart. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise for what he's done in this place. In the name of Jesus. It's time to make a change and the best is yet to come. As the First Family Appreciation Committee begins to come forth. This gifts comes from the culinary team. Um, this is for the first family. And also, this basket comes from the, the first family appreciation goes to you guys, too. And what's in here? It's the more out of the basket. Oh, it's some more stuff for the basket. That's a gift for me, Pastor. That's a gift for you, Pastor. That's what. <laughs> Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Did you feel the love today? Did the Lord move today? In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. To the ministerial staff. Praise team, all of you in your respective places. We welcome you into the house of the Lord. We did not welcome you in the beginning, but I'm glad that you're here. And I pray that you did receive a word from the Lord on today. Pastor, First Lady, if you have anything. I just want to thank you all for coming and worshiping with us today. We we're just so grateful and we're just so full that you came out and showed your love. Thank you guys so much. And we love you all with all our heart. Amen. Well, once again, we're, we're more than grateful. We're just ecstatic that you all would take the time to be with us today. I see a few people who visited from other places and we thank God for your love. It's good to have one of our members back. Amen. <laughs> Uh, Sister TK, she actually wanted to get 
form of Popeye people so y'all can like talk Popeye stuff together. <laughs> but I, before we leave, can I just have about another minute of your time? I got a special guest today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a brother here, he, I'm told 91 years old. Come on. Come on. Now, all I can say is, I pray to look like this at 91 years old. I'm talking about sharp. He ain't got no overtone. He just looked good for 91. And we were praying for him a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago. He was going through in the hospital, and uh, we weren't quite sure how things were going to work out, but we knew what God was already doing. This is actually Mother Ella's father. Amen. Deacon Harrison's father-in-law. He wants to give you a brief testimony, and then he got a little song me and him going to try to do together. Amen. You don't mind, do you? See, when you get this age, you celebrate people. Amen. Amen. I first would like to let you know that God knows something about me. <laughs> Amen. And I'm wondering do we know much about you? Right. See, when you're going off to different churches, because I have a problem at my own church, so I always want to know how you feel that morning when you come to church. See, everybody's been born again all See, when I do the devotional service, after me and the deacon do the devotional service, I ask anybody, you got anything you want to say? You want to testify? It used to, that's what I was raised up doing. Yeah. And sometimes when you get to doing that, the preacher, the deacon do a good uh, prayer service, and it's quite saying good. All right? Then when uh, when I get do it when they do it too they always ask somebody want to testify, but it testify so. Choir sang good. That preacher get up to preach. Sometimes he said, "I can't preach this morning. I got to testify too." <laughs> See, you don't know what testify do. It build the spirit up. To let the world know whose side you on. But I've, I've been, I've raised up like that from 12 years old. I've been serving the Lord ever since, I said, uh, uh, 89 years old. I mean, 89. I've been serving the Lord 89 years. I've never been out in the streets and anything like that. But I do want to know, anybody want to say something? Just a few minutes. I ain't trying to. If it ain't, if I come back again, if all y'all want to testify, <laughs> we we have a good time. I believe wherever I go, if I don't hear the word of God like I like it, I don't visit much. But I don't I never say I stop, for everybody ain't been born like I've been born. Right. See, right. when I was born, oh Lord, I took. I got my religion. I don't know where you ever been in the woods. Yes, sir. But well, that's where I got my religion yes, at, in the woods. And I come and find out I was talking to them trees. Yes, sir. And telling them trees about what God had done yes, for them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going I'm to I'm get into the little song. I'm, I might be able to sing it, but I'm going to try it. But I do want to know from each each one if, if you ain't you ain't got to raise your hand. How many here really know God? Hey, hey, Let me God. see your hand. Yes, sir. Do you believe he is a burden bearer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he's a heavy load sheriff. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. How many in here have ever been burdened down? Yes, sir. Let's see. Let's see your hand. You scared? Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm thinking about what the preacher said a while ago about people. Talking, you know, they talk about one another oh, behind the yes, back. Sir. Well, yes, sir. but you ought to be when God do something for you. Yes, I don't care how good me and Reverend could be. Yes, he can say something I don't like to me. I go to Reverend. And say, well, well, what, what happened? Right. Hmm? Yes, right. I want my my life straight. That's right. I don't know when. I, 
He said he don't know the minute or the hour. Right. Right. That he coming. So let's be ready when he comes. Yes, sir. Amen. So I, I'm going to be coming back. Yes, sir. If the Lord. See, my daughter and them brought me here. Yes, and I, I've been all in New York. And every time somebody asked me that day, I went to one church one time. I'm going to say this now. I'm, I get to talk. So this, uh, I joined this holiness church on the watch pier because uh-huh. I was up there on a farm line. So the, the lady told me, said, well, we're going to a, a Baptist church this evening. You want to go? I said, I'll go to any church. So I went with her. So we, me and these other deacons out there, this lady come up and said, can I get y'all to do a devotion service for him? I said, yes. So the deacon looked at me and said, well, you going to do the prayer? No. I said, I, no, I asked him. Mm-hmm. I said, you going to do the prayer? No, I was going to do the hymn. Mm-hmm. He said, no, you can beat me praying. I said, this ain't no contest. <laughs> this ain't no contest. <laughs> Whatever God give you to say, you say that and be fooled. You don't go there to beat nobody praying. So this lady said, okay. So she went back and got one, uh, another lady from that same church. Yes, sir. And her and this lady did the devotion. Yes, sir. You know about what happened? What happened? She got this lady, and this lady did the hymn. Mm-hmm. She did the prayer. Yeah. I ain't never heard a woman pray like that before in my life. Right. It looked like every stand in my house, stand on my head. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that woman, and that amen. woman got up, she was shouting and said amen and, and dropped dead right there. Amen. So reading them saying that anybody asks you to do something for God, yes. do it. Yes. Do it the best you know how. I don't care how you feel about what I do. All right. I'm going to do it if somebody asks me. I'm supposed to I mind God. Yes, sir. I'm going to have to get up. Yes, sir. The, um, how many know? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and you told the Lord, sir, and you prayed. I heard the man said, two, three, and five, go and have I thought about this. When you say, ask the Lord, you get on your knees and pray and ask God to save you, don't you? Yes, sir. And if he do such things on you, be good, you'll work for him then. Yes, sir. So now look here. <laughs> Why we can't do work for him? Yes, sir. I, like I told some preachers in the church over here not too long ago, I said, we all talking about we, do, we love the Lord and this, 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 this. He wet me. Yeah, we were yeah, we got you a job. I said, all of us done went to work, haven't we? Yes, he said, yeah, we all had a job. I said, yeah, ask him. the boss man for a job then. Yes, sir. I said, he hired you. And you didn't do your work? <laughs> what did he do? Right. He fired right. him. Mm-hmm. I said, tell me where God will fire one. Mm-hmm. God, that's right, you're laying out there. <laughs> <laughs> So what I'm saying, I just I want to when I in a church I always like to know the scripture. Yes, sir. And everybody say I, I I've been born again. I don't know where to been born at. Every everywhere you everywhere you go, you got a story. Right. It's right. A, a be sh- sure right. don't let it be a lie. Ella said she want to hear you sing. Yeah. Huh? Come on. She said you sang. You said you was going to help. Did she say she was going to help? No, she put me up to it. Oh, she put you yeah, up to it. Yeah, I'm right. just doing what she told me to do. Oh. You're like, yeah. She already done knew God was up there. Yeah. <laughs> I, what did I tell you I was going to sing? <laughs> Want to be grand? <laughs> want it be grand? Oh, want it be grand? Want it be grand? Oh, want it be grand? I'm going home to live with Jesus. Want it be?
be great. Oh, won't it be great? Won't it be great? Won't it be great? Oh, won't it be great? I'm going home to live with Jesus. Won't it be great? Oh, one of these mornings, it won't be long. Good for me. today. Amen. You know, I pray when I get that old, somebody give me a little moment to say a couple of things. Amen. 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 I believe the hurt for the Lord today. Amen. Amen. I just want to share this before you leave today. I, I, the powerful word today by none other than the best social pastor this side of heaven. This all goes back to being humble and obedient, guys. I know you think you know your way. I promise you, God will not put you with an effective leader and you be ineffective. He will not put you with a successful preacher and you be unsuccessful unless you're doing your own thing. Amen? Amen? So we thank you for today. On behalf of me and my beautiful family, I ask for your prayers. My baby boy was blessed. His, his team, uh, his football team, the 14U won the national championship, and they are doing a live video for the Super Bowl down in South Miami right now. And I'm so proud of what God is doing with him and, and Lord knows, just 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 pray. Y'all not hear him? Just pray for your kids. Every now and then, kick a door in. Take the doors off the hinges. Act like you ain't had your medicine. And they'll respect you. Huh? If they think you crazier than they are, it works. Amen? Amen. Well, I love you guys so much. Thank you for coming. Let the church say amen today. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. I love that song. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you've given us. Thank you for that, that valuable lesson and that valuable information, oh, Lord, that was given to us through our beloved associate pastor. We're asking you right now, Lord, to put back into him what he put out. Bless him, oh, Lord, and touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Heavenly Father, I ask you right now to touch each and every person that is here and is standing and heard your word. 
let that word, O oh Lord, be engraved in their hearts, their minds, and their very spirit. We're asking you, Lord, to let us walk by faith and not by sight. Guide us, O oh Heavenly Father, with your holy might. And when it's all said and done, it will all be right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we, we